The Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land where our workplace village is located, and we pay our respect to Elders past, present and future. Welcome to orientation for the APC Clinical Assessments. My name is Natalie and I am one of the assessment team members that you will most likely come across when you come and do your clinical assessments here at our simulation lab. The purpose of this video is to help you feel familiar with our assessment environment ahead of time before you come and do your assessments on the day. We're going to take you through a lot of information in this video, but to start with, we'll just cover off a few housekeeping things. When you first arrive, you will find that we have toilets just outside our door in case that you need them. And we also have signage posted all around our office and simulation space that covers off evacuation procedures and also contact details for first aid officers and fire wardens. We do ask that you respect our space by following any directions that are given regarding an emergency situation and that you also bring to our attention anything that you might be concerned about, either in a first aid capacity or a hazard you may identify. We do pride ourselves on having a very safe and clean environment, but we always welcome you to bring anything to our attention that concerns you. When you arrive for your assessment, the first thing we will do is check your ID. So we ask that you bring either a passport or Australian driver's license or another official photo ID for us to cite. If you're not sure if your ID is appropriate, please check with us in advance of your assessment date. We'll also need to see a copy of your professional indemnity insurance. So please forward that to us in the days ahead of your assessment. We need to make sure that your policy is valid before you can commence your assessment. On the day, we're going to bring you to a locker and you will put your belongings away so that you know they are safe for the duration of your assessment. Choose a locker, lock it, and you hang on to the key for your assessment. There are a variety of items that you can and cannot take into the assessment space. Items that you can take include a pen if you would like to, although we do provide pen and paper. You can take small snacks if you are going to be here for more than one assessment, such as a chocolate bar or a muesli bar. You can take small pieces of personal equipment. For example, a stethoscope of your own is encouraged. If you would also like to bring a small goniometer or another small piece of equipment, that is okay, although we do already provide those pieces of equipment for you. We also encourage you to bring a personal drink bottle and we have a filter that you can refill it from. Items that you cannot bring into the assessment space include any electronic devices. So no mobile phones, no smartwatches, no iPads or tablets or laptops of any kind. No pre-written notes or outcome measures or textbooks and no hot food or hot drinks that would make a mess in our space. That should cover everything. If there's anything that you have additional questions about, please contact us before your assessment. Otherwise, let's go through to the assessment space. Welcome to our simulation lab space. This lab space has been custom built specifically for candidates doing their clinical assessments. You will find the environment has been designed to be optimal for a candidate experience when they're doing their assessments. So it is quiet and well laid out for you. What we're going to do is take you through the various stages of your assessment that you will go through. So we'll go to our reading rooms, our treatment rooms, and then we'll come back to this gym area to explain a little bit more in detail about how you will use this space. Your assessment will begin when you come to your reading room. This will be your reading room for the duration of your assessment. What will happen is the administrator will bring you to the room and give you a few moments just to gather your thoughts before we start the reading time. Your 10 minutes reading time will start shortly after when the administrator brings you your patient notes. These notes could come in a variety of formats depending on the case that you have. For example, a case where a patient is seeing a physio for the very first time might only have minimal documentation. Other cases may have referrals attached or test results, x-rays, things like that. And a quite acute patient could have medical charts and notes 
on top of that as well. So your notes will be reflective of what it would be reasonable for a physio in that instance to expect to have access to. You will have 10 minutes on your own to read through those notes. Now, I will tell you that all of the time checks are controlled by the administrator in our office at the front of the simulation lab. You do not need to worry about missing out on any time that you're entitled to as all of the time checks are managed centrally. At the end of your reading time, the administrator will bring in your two assessors for your verbal summary time. They will be introduced to you and if you do happen to have a small question or point of clarification that you want made from your notes, you can ask them when they first come into the room. You have up to five minutes to summarise your patient's case and condition to the assessors. You do not need to use the full five minutes, but it is there for you if you need to use that amount of time. At the conclusion of the verbal summary time, you'll be taken through to meet your patient. Now we are going to step into each of the treatment rooms and take you through each of the treatment rooms individually. But before we do that, I'll just summarise how the rest of the time checks work. So you will go to your patient room for 50 minutes of patient time. You will receive two time checks during that time, one at 20 minutes and one at 40 minutes. We knock twice on the door for 20 minutes and four times for 40 minutes. And I can assure you we are excellent knockers. Every time we knock, we hear the assessor on the other side of the door repeat the time check. So you will definitely be aware of it. At the conclusion of the patient time, you will be brought back to this room. You do not need to return your patient to where they were originally or put away any equipment. You stop what you're doing at the end of the 50 minutes and come back to your room. You then have 10 minutes oral clarification time with the assessors. This is their time to ask questions of you. So we always say that when they're assessing you, they can assess you on what they see you do and what they hear you say, but they don't know what's going on up here all the time. So they may want to know why you chose a particular approach or what you might do next time you see that patient. That is to help them complete their assessment of you. At the conclusion of that 10 minute period, they will leave to complete their assessments and that concludes your assessment and the administrator will come and get you to take you to leave. If you have another assessment, you'll be advised as to how long the break is before your next assessment begins. This is our rehabilitation room. You will find that most of the assessments that occur in this room are neurology assessments, although it is possible for other types of assessments to be held in this room as well, depending on the case. Now, we will talk a little bit about this space and we'll also talk about simulation assessments in general. So just to give you a bit of a sense, when you are coming in to meet your patient, regardless of the room that it's in, you must remember that you are being assessed to the exact same criteria that you would be assessed to if you were in a private practice or hospital setting. Sometimes people aren't sure how to respond to a simulated environment, but the important thing is that you are going to be assessed as if it's a real patient. So the moment you walk in the door, that patient is your patient and you must treat them accordingly. We stress this because assessors have often said to us, that they really enjoy seeing people pass. They do not like seeing people be unsuccessful. And we try to give you the extra information to help you through these assessments. So remember, when you walk in, don't try and anticipate what you think you'll see or what you expect to see. Treat what's in front of you. We talk about this because when you receive your notes, you may have a picture in your head of what the patient will be like. And you may walk in this room or any of the other rooms and that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what you expect. But don't forget that patients can have good days and bad days. They can be doing their exercises diligently at home or they can have not done any of them. And they can have other health and social factors that impact on their recovery. So if you treat just what you expect to see or just a particular condition and not the patient holistically, you will find it hard to be successful. Also remember that the assessment needs to be both safe and effective. So if you are too conscious of being really cautious and the patient doesn't benefit from your treatment, that's something assessors will need to take into account. 
Likewise, safety is still paramount and that needs to be remembered at all times. So keep those things in mind as we go through each of the treatment rooms. The only piece of equipment that we really need to show you in this room is the bow bath bed. You can adjust it with a handle from the top section to lift it up and to lower it back to where it was. The bed is adjustable up and down by a bar which is located on both sides of the bed. It actually has directions printed on. It says up and down with arrows pointing in. Note they're not pointing down. You can't step on top of it and expect anything to happen. You can use your foot or your hand to push it from the side to make it go up and also to go down as well. All of the beds, including this one, are locked into position. You do not need to move them at all. We make sure that there's equal space on either side of the bed for you on the day. If you do feel you need to move a bed for any reason, please check with the assessor or the administrator first, but we do try to set up the rooms so that you most likely won't need to do that. The only other thing to talk about in this room is the role of an assistant. In many cases that you will have, it wouldn't be realistic for another set of hands to be available to help you. However, if your patient, particularly a neurology patient, is a two-person assist, then it's likely you'll need another set of hands to help with mobilising your patient. One of the assessors will step into that role. They will need to be guided by you as to what to do. So treat them like an allied health assistant who you've never worked with before. Don't expect that because they are a physiotherapist, they're going to anticipate your needs and do automatically what you want them to do. Part of your assessment is seeing how well you use them. So don't assume that they're going to be able to do everything for you. You still have that leading physiotherapist role in this room. This is our acute room. You will often find that cardio cases are held in this room, although other cases can be held here as well. Now, obviously with simulation, we can simulate a lot of things, but we can't simulate everything. So this room in particular, you may find that the assessors provide additional information to keep your assessment going and to help you decide what your next step will be in your treatment. So we'll talk a little bit around the different types of equipment that will occur in here and what you need to be aware of. First of all, we have the bed. It is adjustable and there is a remote control with clear pictures on it so that you can adjust the bed up and down and also different sections of it. You will see on the wall here that there is oxygen. Now, obviously we don't pump real oxygen into our simulated patients, but what you will find is that the patient notes will indicate if a patient is on oxygen and what level, things like that. That will help you make your decision as to, for example, you may want to take a patient on a walk on a portable oxygen device. We will show you our portable oxygen separately, but you will see the oxygen tube connected if that is relevant to this particular case. Likewise, there is an option there for suction. If a patient is on suction, you will need to make sure that you manage their leads and lines accordingly because they will not be able to be taken off that. So their treatment will have to occur within their bed and the surrounding area. There are sides to the bed that can come up. They lift straight up and there is a black button that you lift to pop it back down. If you have any trouble with that, just ask for assistance. Now keep in mind, as with not pumping oxygen into people, we also don't pump drugs and other things into our simulated patients. So again, if they were on an IV or if there was a PCA attached, which would be here, you will see them attached to your patient, but you won't see any settings come up. You need to be guided by your notes for that. The assessors are looking for how you handle your patient, taking into account anything they might be connected to and to show that you can still give them a safe and effective treatment despite any lines and leads that may be attached. If you are auscultating your patient, the assessors will want to see you physically do it. They will want to see you go through the motions of it and then they will advise you what you are hearing. So you need to be guided by them, but they need to see you do it first. 
One thing that the assessors will want to see you do is if you are checking blood pressure or heart rate of your patient, you need to demonstrate that you can use the equipment. So if you are checking blood pressure, they will want to see you take the cuff, position it and put it on correctly and inflate it as well. If the unit's not already switched on, the green button switches it on and the button next to it inflates the cuff. Once it's fully inflated, you will see some readings come up that you disregard. The assessors will give you the reading that you use. The same applies for the pulse oximeter. This is a fixed one, but there are portable ones available in our equipment cupboard as well. This is our outpatient room. So we're going to take you through a few bits and pieces in here, starting with the plinth. It is adjustable at both ends. So there is a handle at one end to lift it up. And likewise, at the other end, it can be lifted up as well. There is a foot pedal to adjust the bed up and down. The pedal is currently on this side, but can be put on the other side as well, if it's easier for you to use. In the outpatient room, as with all of our rooms, the cases that you will get are at an entry level standard. They've been checked thoroughly by a variety of people, all of whom are experienced with both APC assessments and with working with graduate physiotherapists in Australia. So rest assured that the cases that you get have already been checked to make sure that it would be fair and reasonable to expect an entry level graduate from an Australian physiotherapy course to be able to handle the patient. In our outpatient room, we've also included some additional equipment and resources for you to have on hand. You will see here there are creams, wipes and oils and tissues. There's a variety of models in case you wish to refer to them with your patient at all. There are also goniometers, although there are more in our equipment cupboard as well. And there's a portable pulse oximeter and portable blood pressure monitor in here as well. You'll see we have pillows and on the day of your assessment, we provide towels and other additional linen. If you require more linen than what has been provided in any of your treatment rooms, just ask the administrator and we can supply extra linen for you. You will also see some closed cupboards in each of the treatment rooms. You don't need to worry about those. That is storage for the patient's personal belongings. I'm now going to take you through our equipment cupboard. We have a lot of resources available for you to use in your assessment and we do have a list posted online for you to refer to. We will give you a bit of a sense as to how everything is laid out and what to expect when you enter the cupboard. We'll also highlight a couple of pieces of equipment that you need to be aware of. If you wish to use portable oxygen for your patient at all, this is what you use. Like the actual acute room, nothing in here pumps out real oxygen, but the assessors will want to see you use this safely with your patient. What you will do is connect the oxygen tube here. You can assume that the tank is filled and already switched on, and this won't change at all. You just need to change the level on the side and explain out loud to the assessors what you've set it to. That way they know that you know how to use it and they can observe you while you use it with your patient. I'm going to take you through an overview of our equipment cupboard. Starting in this corner, we have a variety of crutches and frames. Now, if your patient already has a crutch or a frame that they are using, it will already be with them in their treatment room. But if they don't have one and you want them to use one during your session, you can come and help yourself to any of these that are available. We also have a neurosensory kit and slide sheets available. And there's another pulse oximeter, a portable one and a portable blood pressure unit here as well. We have a variety of outcome measures that you can use if it's appropriate to your case and you feel that it would be helpful. You'll see up here that there are a variety of breathing devices and we also have bubble pep as well. Please refer to the list for the exact devices that are available and make sure that you're aware we always have to use fresh filters with everything that we use. 
We have transfer belts. There are two different sizes, one large and one smaller. The green is the large and the red is the smaller one. Don't worry if you don't remember because the administrator will be on hand to help you with all of these things if you're not sure where they're located. We have slings, collars and cuffs and a variety of bandages, um, elastic supports, fixamol, hand weights, therapy balls and ankle weights as well. There are different therabands that you can use and you can cut off as much as you need. The scissors are in a tub that is also filled with stopwatches and masking tape and scissors and other things that you may need along the way. Stopwatches are all very easy to use. Go, stop and reset. If you forget where they are, please just ask. We have cones that you can use to mark out anything in the gym space or you could use masking tape as well. The other items you can see are quite large and we have a 7.5 centimetre step that you can use and there is also a slide board available. As previously stated, please just make sure that you refer to the administrator if you're not sure where a piece of equipment is. And we've also provided you with an equipment list for you to refer to in your reading rooms as well. We're now going to talk about the broader gym space and how that gets used during your assessment. As mentioned, at any time that you feel you would like to bring your patient out into this space, you are welcome to use it. Be aware that there may be another candidate out here at the same time. If that happens, you do what you would do in any working environment and that is that you share the space. So you either share the equipment or if someone is using something that you would like to use, for example, the stairs, you may choose to do a different exercise first until those stairs are available. And you can articulate this out loud and explain your intentions and how you're modifying for the benefit of the assessors. But our space is actually very well designed in terms of having multiple candidates having their assessments at the same time. Now, in terms of distances and walking in the sim lab, there is one area where we are slightly constrained on space and that is the 10 metre walk. We don't have a full 10 metres that can be safely used, otherwise the patient would end up walking into one of the reading rooms and into the equipment cupboard, which would not be ideal. So for the purposes of our simulated assessments, we mark out eight metres. All of our assessors are aware that if you're choosing to do a 10 metre walk, you will use the eight metre markings as a guide because you don't have an alternative. And in an ideal situation, they're aware that you would use the full 10 metres. So we have in the sim lab marked one starting point, And then at the other end, we have the other point. So you can safely take your patient between points. This is the only distance that is marked out for you on the floor. If you wish to mark out anything else for your patient, such as one meter or three meters, you need to mark that out yourself. A really quick way of measuring is that every one of our carpet squares is exactly half a meter in distance. So if you need to make out any markings, you can step out half a meter at a time and use the masking tape that's in the equipment cupboard. As you can see, we have a variety of equipment that you can also use in the gym space. We have a staircase that has two sets of stairs with handrails and the stairs are slightly different heights as well so that you can use whichever side is most appropriate for your patient. We have chairs out here. Some are not adjustable, others are adjustable heights. And we also have the parallel bars. If you need them adjusted to a different height or moved into a different position, please just ask an assessor to help you with that. We have a variety of wheelchairs and frames that can be used during the assessments. As with the crutches and frames demonstrated in the equipment cupboard, if a patient already uses a wheelchair or a particular frame, it will already be in the treatment room when you go in to meet them. 
However, if they are not using one of these wheelchairs or frames and you would like to use one during your assessment, you are welcome to come and utilise what's available to you. There are just a couple of things we have to cover off as we finish up our orientation session. The first is hygiene precautions. We expect that all candidates when they come into the simulation lab adhere to all of the hygiene precautions that you would normally adhere to in your normal working environment. All through our treatment rooms and out here in the gym area, we have hygiene stations with sanitizer. We have soap out here and there are gloves in all of the treatment rooms as well. If there is a case that requires additional precautions, there will be signage posted on the door to the appropriate treatment room, along with any extra PPE that is needed. Likewise, if there are any broader infection control procedures that have been put in place for the simulation lab itself, this will be outlined on our website. The last thing you need to know is that one of your assessors will be wearing a video camera during your assessment. This came about from candidate feedback about wanting to know what happened during the assessment, particularly if there was an unsuccessful result. An assessor will wear a body camera which captures both audio and video from the start of verbal summary time right through to the end of oral clarification time. This footage is held on a secure server and is not viewed by anyone unless there is an internal review application. In that case, only the internal review panel members will have access to that video so that they can make a decision on the application. Otherwise, all videos are deleted after a period of three months. So we will be asking you to give your consent to be filmed during your assessment. Please note we ask consent not just from candidates, but from the simulated patients and from the assessors as well. And this consent does not cover public viewing or use or distribution of these videos in any way. This concludes the orientation session. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact the assessment team on assessment at physiocouncil.com.au. We look forward to welcoming you when you come to the simulation lab.